This video is dual purpose as it's information you need to know to pass the Humber College real estate exams and will also find ideas and ways to find potential jobs you could do while getting your license. First, what is deemed trading? Second, what an unregistered person can and can't do? And third, possible jobs to apply for? Be sure to stick around to the end as I'll tell you exactly what I did. I was this close to getting a job while I was in the Humber College real estate program. As usual, if you're looking for additional support to pass the exams first try or crush a retake look for the exam master mini courses in the description below more on that later in the video but let's just dive right into it first what is deemed trading in real estate and what is the definition I'll start off by saying that anyone in Ontario can sell or lease their own home which of course is an unregistered person however in Ontario what you and I are doing or depending when you're watching this hoping to do is represent other people to represent other people to trade in real estate and build a career you have to be registered. So the definition of a trade, the act defines a trade as a disposition or acquisition of or transaction real estate by sale, purchase, exchange, option, lease, or rental. Trading is also considered any offer or attempt to list real estate for those purposes and any advertisement, conduct, or negotiation directly or indirectly in furtherance of any disposition, acquisition, or transaction. That is essentially the outline and it's needed to establish what is trading. Easier layman term examples would be listing a property for sale, showing a property to a buyer, marketing a property such as hosting an open house, arranging a lease, explaining information about a property to a potential buyer, and acknowledging a notice related to an offer on behalf of a seller or buyer. Acknowledging a notice, that essentially means receiving emails, for example, from a buyer and relaying it to the listing agent. That will come up on the exam, so when you see that receiving notices, just think email and we're doing our job helping our clients. Okay, that's first on the list. Second on the list, what an unregistered person can and can't do. And this will directly relate to the job you could potentially apply for. And of course, it will be on the exams. First, we'll do permitted activities and unregistered persons. Permitted activities, one, attend a listing or offer presentation in a support role with a salesperson, such as taking photographs or assisting in measuring rooms. Two, set up listing files, complete marketing sheets, based based on the listing or data form obtained by the salesperson and submit listings and changes to the local listing service. Three, witness a seller or buyer's signature. Four, schedule appointments for a broker salesperson to show listed properties. Five, draft an offer based on the directions of a broker or salesperson. Six, provide listing information to consumers such as a flyer. Seven, prepare or produce promotional material or place a for sale or sold sign on a property. Eight, install lock boxes with the seller's permission to have access to the property and last nine attend an open house for the public with a broker slash salesperson for example to help safeguard the property or for personal security reasons really good list there on to now not permitted activities one be an active participant in a listing or offer presentation such as providing advice on an appropriate listing price for terms of an offer second explain or advise the seller on any changes to the listing agreement three receive or acknowledge a notice again this would be an email, for example, on behalf of a buyer or seller. Four, show a property to a buyer. Five, explain or negotiate an offer with a seller or buyer. Six, answer questions regarding the listing information on a property. Seven, perform any type of prospecting, such as phone solicitation or door knocking. Four, seven here, and we talk on this a bit more later in the video. You can call people, but you have to be calling people on behalf of other salespersons. We'll go in a bit deeper on this one later in the video. Eight, access a property to assist a buyer or third-party professional during an inspection and last nine host an open house for other salespersons or the public to view the property can't of course host an open house by yourself you'll have to have the salesperson or broker with you good couple lists there to just go over use good common sense that stuff will come up in the exams and great for getting a job perfect segue what type of jobs you can get as a unregistered salesperson I'm only going to cover three but first where to find them if you're searching online I used indeed or work op lists. There are two really good ones, but of course there's more as well. After that, you can just reach out directly to local brokerages around you or even successful agents or teams. So what to do? First would be an assistant, an assistant for a team or a really busy real estate agent. Essentially, you'll be doing what is on that first list I showed. These nine topics are possible things 
that a real estate agent, a busy real estate agent might ask you to do. It might be a salary or it might actually be an hourly rate. You may have a list of tasks to do every single day or you may just be on call. A lot of real estate agents aren't that organized so you might just be at their call when they need you. Second would be admin staff. This would be for a brokerage that runs in-house admin staff on behalf of their agents or brokers. The cost to those agents would be built into their commission splits or even their desk fees, and this cost would pay your position. Both good in their own way, but personally, I wasn't interested in either one of these positions. I did, however, want to add or build on a skill that I already had talking on the phone. Phone sales jobs, right? In this industry, being able to carry on good conversations with strangers about real estate, building relationships, this is a high ticket skill and I wanted to add maybe two to three hours a day where I could hone this even better. This position is called an ISA, an inside sales agent or internal sales agent, and the job can consist of following up on leads or cold calling. Essentially an ISA, the job of an ISA is to get interested parties in contact with experienced sales agents. You qualify them on the phone, get information, and pass them along to realtors you are working for. At the time for me, when I was getting my real estate license, I searched on Workopolis and there was one and I reached out to them. I know and understand this game, right? This real estate game, it's all about the numbers. X amount number of phone calls will lead to X amount number of sales. Getting good on the phone is crucial for this industry. You can run all the ads that you want, of course, Facebook, Instagram, Google, even promote yourself on YouTube like this, but ultimately, Ultimately, at the very end, you're still going to have to get really good at closing them, having conversations with them on the phone. Follow-up is so key. So in my situation, when I called them, when I reached out to them, and we had a couple phone calls, on the second one though, I started to sense this is where things were going to take a turn for the worse. What they wanted me to do, they wanted me to make sure I knew that to start this role at the beginning for the first few days or even a week, you're going to be reaching out to your entire SOI, the people you personally know. As an ISA, you may get as little as 15 to 20% of the deal that you bring on. This didn't seem like a way I wanted to start my career. First for me, I knew this wasn't a brokerage I was going to continue my career with at all by any means. And second, I didn't like the idea of me reaching out to my SOI, telling that I'm in real estate when I'm not really yet, and then vouching for someone that I just met. So it just didn't sit well with me. I was more than ready to call any leads they had or start cold calling on their behalf, but this wasn't the foot I wanted to start my career on. So that job was out the window for me and I just concentrated on getting the Humber College real estate program done as fast as I could and on the schedule that I already had. So by no means do I want this story to discourage you, but there is something to be said to getting through the Humber College real estate program as fast as you can and start building and growing your own business. Like mentioned, if you're looking for that additional support to pass these exams first try or to crush a retake. Look to my exam master mini courses in the description below. It's mini notes, mini quizzes, my exact fundamentals I use to pass all exams first try and in four and a half months. And I also do video breakdowns on the four types of questions you may see in the exams. Those links in the description below are also value links for the YouTube family for the time being. I really hope this video helped guys. And if you have any questions at all, you can DM, email, comment on this video. I get back to everyone. I'm Callum Moore. EXP Realty real estate broker here in Ontario. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.